How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Volney Live. My name is Ricky. I'm the owner of Volney Capital, and I am extremely excited for tonight's interview. We have Tamara Day from HGTV Bargain Mansions. Uh, extremely excited to have her on here for uh, this Saturday night edition. Um, she is uh, going to be a great guest, going to take questions throughout the entire interview. Um, we are extremely excited. The season premiere of Bargain Mansions is Tuesday night at 9, 8 central on HGTV. So make sure you guys check that out. Um, and as soon as she uh, comes in, we'll get this started. Hi, Hi. how are you? <laughs> Doing great. How are you? Good. How's everything? It's been a fun day. <laughs> the weather's good. My kids are home. It's awesome. <laughs> how about great. you? I'm doing all right. We're uh, here in Boston. We're all bunkered inside, but, um, you know, happy, still happy and healthy. So can't ask for much more than that. That's um, right. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you for joining us. Everyone who doesn't, you know, doesn't know, I just gave you an intro before, but this is Tamara Day, HGTV Bargain Mansions. Um, and we are extremely excited to have you tonight. Um, so if anyone has questions throughout the entire interview, please just send them over in the comments. We'll get to everything uh, at the end. So just keep the questions coming. But um, to get started, can you just you know tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started in this world of design and renovations, and then you know how did the TV show come about? Sure. You know, um, I have always loved design, but I grew up on a farm, and so I didn't really know that there was a career path in design. So I got a degree in communications. I like to say I got a BS in BS. <laughs> and so I use it every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but my husband and I got married in 2000 and he had been doing renovations his whole life. He had rental houses when he was 16, um, a dozen of them in college. So it was really in his blood and growing up on a farm, I grew up doing everything yourself anyway. Mm -hmm. And so every apartment I had, I was fixing it up. Everything I did, I, I did myself. And then when we got married, we started doing it together. And every house we bought, we were renovating it and living through construction and mess and all of the nightmare that everybody knows <laughs> yeah. well and found that I loved design as well. And so neighbors would come over and see it and like, well, can you help me with my house? Can you do my kitchen? What about this? And it just started growing. Um, and in 08, we had three kids that were uh, three, two, and new, and we bought this house that I'm in, and um, then the financial crisis hit, and I became general contractor. My husband kept working his day job as a financial planner, and um, I took the reins. These beams, I sanded every inch of these myself, yeah. <laughs> um, stained them myself, and just figured it out. With the hardwoods, I carried every stick off that truck so that I didn't have to pay somebody to do it. And then we needed to fill the house up. So I needed furniture. And I started going to estate sales and renovating furniture that way. And then people wanted to buy the furniture. And then I started doing big sales here in my house twice a year. And that's how the TV show happened is I would do these events twice a year and everything on the first floor was for sale. We'd have food trucks, thousand people come through the house in a weekend, sell everything and then start over from scratch. And it was so fun, but word got out about what I was doing. And I met my executive producer, Matt Antrim, about six years ago now. And he's like, I want to do a show about your design work and the houses that you're renovating and, and all the stuff. And so I said, sounds fun. And never yeah. really thought much about it because nobody's making TV in Kansas City. And yeah. then here we are five years later, season three. <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. Well, tell me about the store too, because that's Yes, That's so we new, opened just getting started. Literally just opened in December, two weeks before Christmas, and we are having so much fun with it. And of course, we're closed now, but we, um, you know, it's been almost a blessing to close right now because it's given us time to regroup, get everything set. Because we were in a mad dash for Christmas to get open, so it's like a, a blessing in um, disguise for us. To so, be. What, what what type of store is it? What are, what are you guys selling? Is it your own product stuff you're making, or it's um, mostly home decor? It's things that I select at market, um, and then sometime soon it will be some of my own stuff that I'm creating. Is it online as well? People can buy it stuff is. online? Awesome. Yes, absolutely. Growing Days Home. So my last name is Day. 
Yeah. I have four kids now, and so I am growing my days. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about your design style for a little bit. Um, so yeah, kind of tell me about your your design style. Has it always been the same? Is it changing over the years? And you know, where do you see things going in the you know in the next couple of years? Oh, I think it's definitely changed over the years. I'd say my design style when I did our house was definitely. Um, you know, more in the farmhouse feeling. It was mm. 11 years ago. And so I was before the trend and now I'm ready to go a little bit more modern. And you see a little bit more of that modern sensibility in my design. But I think I always hold on to the traditional elements and try to preserve the historic parts of the house and add charm into homes where it's been stripped out because people take these old houses and just you know, big box them, you know, they, they got them and then they big box them and all of the hundred year old charm is just out the window. So I try to bring that back whenever I can, but having a modern flair to it that makes sense for current. Yeah. So I was watching some of the episodes today and, you know, so talk to the people about how to properly mix in modern touches into these, an older home, because I think you do it extremely well where you're able to take something that's you know, a, a, an old mansion, and then you are able to make it feel very homey with modern touches. So what's the trick to that? And then how can people do it in their own designs? You know, one of my, I know a lot of designers are like less is more and I am more is more for sure. I like a lot of stuff. I think that's what makes that homey feeling in any space, a little bit more full. Um, I'm learning to edit for photography because it looks better in photography. In video, it looks better full. So it's, um, I think that's one of the key elements. And then just saving the things that are charming. One of the things I have found in renovations particularly versus new construction is the challenges that you face, like that wall structural, I have to have a header, I have to leave a column or something end up being those quirky things that if you embrace it in the right way adds the charm and the character that would just feel sterile otherwise yeah nice um so what's your favorite room in a project to design and, and to build out so kitchens bathrooms yep kitchens bathrooms those are definitely my favorite you know although i love a good mud room and laundry room because those are the fun spaces that you know nobody's gonna do crazy over the top papers and finishes in the kitchen but in a mud room that you want it to be cheerful and fun you can go way over the top yeah and uh have you guys ever faced issues with like historic homes and not being able to make certain changes or is that not something that you face out in kansas city um, I do face that in some projects, but um, we always avoid those homes for television purposes, timelines, because I, I know what I'm getting into with that. And it's just so cumbersome to jump through the hoops. Yeah. And, and I try really hard to save as much charm and character as I possibly can in these houses. And so, you know, we do what I can, but I try to avoid anything that's actually on the historical registry. So on the show, you wear a lot of hats. What, what would you call yourself? Are you a developer now? Are you a contractor? Are you a designer? Or, you know, which, where, does, where do you fall now? I would say I'm more of a designer than anything. And I have a, because that's, that's what people hire me for. No one is going to hire me to be their contractor. Um, I don't, there's not enough hours in the day. It's not my passion. I'm just very capable of all of those things. And so I kind of like to, um, say I'm kind of like the second hand. I'm not a plumber, but if there's a plumber there and he needs help, I can help and he can direct me very well. Or if the hardwoods need finished, I can be that assistant. I'm not the lead, I'm more of a helper kind of person yeah. on all of those things. And, and over the years I've learned enough to be really dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, on, so for the people watching, say they want to get into renovating their own home. What are tricks for them to do it on a tight budget? Where are things where they should do first? You know, let's start with the kitchen. Where are things that, where people can do something in their kitchen that can make a big change on a budget? On a budget? Well, obviously paint's the number one budget friendly thing you can do. You know, I wanted a change in my kitchen a couple of years ago and it was an all white kitchen and we painted all the lowers black. And that was just a new lift to the house. It changed the whole feeling and it was a three day project and it was done. Um, another really 
surprising thing that makes a huge difference is hardware. You know, changing out the hardware can completely change the feeling of your kitchen because if you have the dated, um, you know, bronze stuff and you want to change, you take that out and you put in a gold or a black, it just transforms the space. Yeah, or even adding hardware. You see in some old kitchens, they just have cabinetry. Take, spend the couple dollars per cabinet, add some hardware. Huge, exactly. huge dish, different, you know, immediately. Absolutely. Um, all right, so we're going to play a little game, and then we'll start. We've got probably 25 questions, but we'll get to those after. We're going to play a little game. We play this on every episode. It's this or that. Okay. Right? So I'm going to run through a list. You can answer it. You can elaborate however you want to handle it. Um, so you just kind of talked about this one. So we're going to start right off in the kitchens, white kitchen or other, other, other. I've lived with it for 11 years. I'm ready for other. And I think you're going to see a lot of color coming this season in season three. We've got a green kitchen, a blue green kitchen. We've got a pink pantry, a yellow cabinetry. Like we've gone for color. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I love it. I love it. Um, so hardwood flooring, true hardwood or engineered? True hardwoods. I, I mean, I like both depending on the situation. And if you can save what you have, always save. Um, engineered is so nice if you are on a budget and you want it done fast and time-wise. So that can be a lifesaver for a schedule. So and they, and they hold up well. They look beautiful. I think both are pretty good. Yeah, and anyone listening, so bring in a, a flooring expert. If you think you can't save the floors or they can't tie in the old floors into a new floor, you'd be shocked with what they can do. So don't and just assume. You just said something that I get asked often is the lacing in the floors, and I see this as like done a, a DIY done wrong, is that they think, oh, well, we've got hardwoods in this room, we'll put hardwoods in this room, and they don't match them, and they don't lace them in. They'll just cut a straight line and then – you've just got a straight line across the floors. Even if you match the floors, you, it, it ruins it, or you patch it with just a box. Doing the right way and getting an expert in to do this and lift it up so that it actually laces the flooring in, it can completely make the whole floor look perfect right. versus the, the halfway mark. Yeah, sticking to floors, we actually had a question come in earlier today on the page about dark floors. Are you a fan of dark flooring? I know that there's been a big trend shift to the grays and the lights. Uh, do you think dark floors are coming back? Is that the way to go? I am not a fan of, of dark floors, mainly because I have four kids and there is no way I could maintain that. And I know, and, and I don't wanna have to spend my time maintaining it. So I really like a light floor and I like the floor to be just a natural matte finish stain, just clear. And yeah. so you really see the wood textures and the grain. Um, I think it's a really beautiful feeling, even in a modern space. Nice. Um, next up, ceiling fans. Yes or no? Nope, never. <laughs> Thank you. Outdoor Thank porches. you. Thank you. I hate ceiling fans. I hate ceiling fans. You know, I don't. I don't like moving air, so no. <laughs> Great, no ceiling fans. I think just one thing we've mentioned before: if you're gonna put a ceiling fan in, make sure it's not in a place, a room with a really low ceiling. You need to have good height, not just for danger, more just for the fact it makes the room feel even smaller if you have low ceilings. Yes, and another thing you want to make sure that the box is rated to hold a ceiling fan. I've been in so many houses where somebody tried to hang one and it pulls the pulls it out of the ceiling because they're just using what was meant to be a, a flat fixture. I see all these people. Let us know what you think of ceiling fans. I'm seeing a lot of hatred towards them. I'm seeing people love them. Let us know in the comments. Um, all right. Accent wall. Painted or other? And from your episode this year with those stick on those the stick on wood pieces, that was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, I think that that on a budget, it, was, it seemed so easy to do. Anyone could do it. So one, explain that design that you did, and two, paint it or other. Um, other. Uh, if you're going to do a statement wall, it's got to be something awesome. Um, paint is just not enough of a bang for your buck. Um, so go for a wallpaper or these stick on the stick on wood panels. They're called deco panels. They're made in Brazil, and they are so user friendly. I mean. Just if you can use a um, a saw and cut them and trim out the edges, the hardest part is literally cutting 
to fit the wall, but otherwise dreamy to put in. So simple and looked incredible. Yeah, on the episode, it looked so easy. And I was like, that just has to be easy for TV. But it really, it really was. No, it really was. The hardest part, I will say, the only thing is using the circular saw when the backing is a, it's almost like a foam padding and then exceptionally sticky back. So it gets your, your blade gunked up pretty quick. But it goes up so, like, the, the gunking and then you have to be putting it in the right spot the first time. It doesn't come off. So right. if you're pulling that back off, you're pulling sheetrock with it. They, yeah. they are there for the long haul. <laughs> um, all right, crown molding or wainscoting? Ooh, both. I love both. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the more trim, the better. So I've seen in a couple of your designs and even your house, you went with a dark, uh, you know, most of the typical crown molding or typical uh, coffered ceiling would have white paint. Seems like you've brought in, you know, more of the traditional style of dark stains or black paint and that type of thing. Talk to me about that decision and if that's something that you'd recommend for others. So these beams were the um, orange oak from the 80s, you know, super orange. And I just, I knew I was doing the white kitchen. I didn't want to have a white house. And so I wanted to mix it up. And I'm a big fan of mixing wood tones as well and trying to never make it feel like the trim grew out of the floor. So I'll show you our floors here. We have hickory floors. Mm -hmm. So all of the trim work is, um, is really dark, but then the doors are a different color, the floors are a different color. And I think that adds to the charm of making, our house is about a 1980s house, making it feel like it's a much older home than it actually is. Nice. Um, master bathroom or master closet? Bathroom, for sure. That's where you, you wake up and you spend so much time in the bathroom. I mean, gosh, my daughter's in there with me. It's like the family room practically every morning. <laughs> That's where it happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this goes back to the beams. Exposed beams or a fireplace, like refinished fireplace? Oh. Toss up. Oh. I'm 50-50 on that. I love both. Trim work, you just can't beat good trim work, but having a focal point of a fireplace is huge. Yeah, I think that's another easy way to add additional value to a room, right? Crown molding, a carpenter and some and some crown molding is and paint is very simple to do, not a large expense and can really change a design. So if someone wants to do something to their living room because they feel it's boring, crown molding is a simple way to you know, add some flair. Um, Absolutely. All right, so we've got a ton of questions. We're going to start back at the beginning here. Um, okay, first is uh, Polly8 asks, how do you feel about light wood cabinets? I love that, actually. We just did, um, I think two of the episodes this season have light wood cabinets. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's I really, really on trend right now. That white oak cabinet um, mm -hmm. really looks awesome. Um, next up is, uh, Kima Samvi. Uh, what recommendations do you have for a beginner getting started? Start small. So I didn't start working in mansions by any stretch of the imagination. We started with, you know, three, three bedroom ranches that were easy. Um, but don't be afraid to try things. You know, it's, what's the worst that can happen? I mean, don't start with electrical or plumbing. I mean, you can burn it down, you can flood it, but anything else, just try it. Ask for advice. And I believe YouTube can teach you anything you want to know. What, what should someone, if they're trying to do their first flip, when you're getting, you know, even now, what are you looking for when you go in to find, you know, for, to be the right project? So it's all about location and the price when you buy it. You, you make your money when you buy it. So holding out, I think a lot of people, the mistake they make is they get excited about a property and they feel like, oh, I just have to have it. And they spend too much when they buy it to be able to flip it after they're done. So not getting emotionally attached to a project at the beginning and getting it at the right price and knowing that there's another one coming. There will always be another house and let it go if the price gets too high. I remember when I got started, I missed out on a couple properties and I was so down in the dumps. And then the next one I bought ended up being a better project 
than the one that I missed out on. So just because you missed out on what you think was the perfect one, there's going to be another and another. So always. Um, and another thing, always, always get inspections and have all of the, the sewer lines checked. Like those two things can really make or break a deal. And we, we got in a hurry last year on one of the houses. I don't know if you saw that episode, but the sewer line, um, the, everything was working. We were in a hurry to close and didn't get the pipes checked and scoped and ended up having to tear up the entire front yard out through the neighbor's yard and into the street. And that was not a cheap fix. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, anyone who's buying a, a home for a project like that, it's a couple hundred bucks. You can have someone come out. They'll bring a camera. They'll go through the, the main out to the street and they'll see the condition. If there's cracks, they will all, all that information will come out. And honestly, it's something you can easily negotiate off the purchase price. Cause once they know, then they have to disclose it to everybody else. So it's uh, an easy way that can get caught, but it won't be in your normal home inspection. So if you're, if you're doing a home inspection, that's not going to be included. You're going to have to get a separate person to do that. Um, Jack Ordway, shout out Jack. He's actually my general contractor. Uh, hey Jack. Asks, um, what type of uh, wo what type of wood are you using for ceiling beams? For ceiling beams. Oh, you know what? We just did a living room actually out of cargo lumber, so it's actually like old railroad box cars. The lumber off of that, and it's got like the oil from the engines and they've got lots of character and charm and um built some box beams out of that it was pretty cool nice um next up is rory marsh um let's see rory says do you ever uh work with beach front design or only farm style um, I would say I don't do very much farm style in general and being landlocked in the middle of the country of Kansas. <laughs> I don't have very many opportunities to do beachfront. I would love to do beachfront. Um, I was lucky enough to get to do dream home this year, which was on Hilton Head Island. And um, that was my first beachfront property. And that was pretty awesome. Nice. Uh, Rory, um, Rory also asked, uh, what's the most expensive home that you've ever worked on? Um, I think probably I had two last year that were, oh no, I had three last year that we did that were about a million three. Um, one of those, if you included the property around it and not just the house, it, it was probably in the 3 million range. Wow. Nice. Um, we Ellie, also work on projects like a hundred thousand as well. So it's like right. truly the gamut of everything. Uh, Ellie Butes asks, what are your thoughts, pros and cons on cement countertops? So if your foundation is awesome and your house doesn't settle and it doesn't have any movement, basically, I like the look of them. I've just had a, experiences with them where they crack so much easier than other solid surfaces. And so if you're doing a large slab of concrete and you have any settling or shifting, you're going to get a crack right through it. Nice. Um, let's see. We got uh, Sigma Design Lab asks, what is challenging about working on a TV show on, on HGTV? Timelines. That is the biggest challenge because everything is accelerated, but then slowed down. So if we're working on a project and, um, you know, the cabinets are coming in, the day the cabinets come in, the camera crew needs to be there. The whole, you know, they don't live in the house. So they're, they're there on the very specific days that things are happening. And so everybody has to stop working so that camera can get all of the shots that they need, get the cabinets in, get everything done. So that means nothing else can be going on in the house because of noise. So you wouldn't hear dad and I talking if, if there's a saw going in the next room. So the whole project has to shut down, but we're getting them done in significantly faster timelines than anybody would generally get a house done in. So it's start and stop and do it fast. Yeah. I saw on the show too, which I think you might be the only show in recent shows on HGTV that does separate episodes on the same house right because most shows it's like one house 
what, and that's it. It's done. They move on. You've got multiple. And is that something you guys had to negotiate? How did that come about? Because that's not the standard for HGTV. That's an old school. That's like, uh, you know, the, the old school shows that used to have one house for a whole season. Right. Um, well, no, we're, we're one house per hour. But right. it, so it, this season we have eight houses and eight hours of television. So um, the show, though, is broken up into a reveal at the halfway point. So you okay. get phase one and phase two, phase two. at the halfway point. Um, and so it's really a it, it's nice because I feel like, you know, magic of TV makes it look like. I finish phase one first and then move on to phase two, but yeah. we're getting it all done at one time. It's the magic of commercials and yeah. pauses in the show. That okay. So that's done. how it's done. Yeah. Nice. So it's really just more so that you get a reveal, you get to see what we've been doing and then, on that first phase and then get the second phase done. Nice. Um, next up, uh, same Sigma design lab asks, do you prefer gold or black hardware? Ooh, I have been a big fan of gold for a long time, but I'm starting to lean towards the black now. Um, just because too many people are using gold now. Exactly. Um, uh, Fit and Focused asks, can I paint my, laminate ca my laminated cabinets? Oh, gosh. You can, but it's probably not going to turn out very well. <laughs> I would wouldn't say no. Wouldn't recommend it. Um, <laughs> You know, one thing though you could do is if you if the cabinets are still in good shape, you could switch out the doors. Um, try that, but I wouldn't go painting your laminate cabinets. Um, Jack also asked uh, non-white painted ceilings. So painting a ceiling a different color. You've been starting to see that lately. What do you think? I love it. My kitchen ceiling is actually a soft blue. Um, it just kind of warms the space up. But then I love wallpaper on a ceiling. Yeah, wow. it's the fifth wall. Go wild with it. Do something fun, like entryways in particular, um, laundry rooms, bedrooms, like any place. I love it. Wow. Awesome. Um, all right. We got uh, Katarina Camilleria asks, sink in the island or not on the island? If you have a window in your kitchen that the placement makes sense for a sink, I say I always put the sink looking out the window. If you don't have a window and your sink's gonna be at a wall, for sure the island. Um, uh, Javeen Star Artist asks, ask Tamara about all the artwork she uses. Oh, I love artwork. I use all original artwork and I find every, all the art that I use on the show I have found from Instagram. And so I get oh, cool. bored at night and I start looking up artists and then I message them and see if they want to be part of the show. And um, all of it's original. I personally have selected every piece. Um, and I, I love it. I love working with independent artists and giving them as many shout outs as possible. Does that art stay in the homes after you sell them? Do you leave it? No, no, it actually comes back to my store. So oh. all of it is for sale um, in the store with, you know, the, the artists getting their commission on it. So we're almost becoming a gallery at this point cool. with how much artwork we have. And I think this season you're going to see, like, the art this season just blows last year out of the water. There's so much great stuff. Amazing. Um, let's see, we've got so many questions. Uh, Kara One asked, um, yeah, so... Yeah, so edge edge banding or painting your kitchen doors? Um, edge banding. I'm not sure I know what that is. I'm not sure either, but I guess what about colored colored uh, doors? So not standard white. Oh, absolutely. Like uh, cabinetry wise, 100 percent. And even interior wise, we just did a project where we painted um, the woodwork was already painted. It was really old house and we went with a really dark gray on the the trim work and the doors and it looks gorgeous nice. would you always match the door color to the trim color not usually actually um my house all the trim is white but the doors are dark wood awesome um sweetie pie cupcake <laughs> asks what do you think about tile that looks like real wood um actually and I, I use a lot of that actually um i think it's great in the right spaces. Um, we have one project this season that's like a lake house and it's 
you know, going to have kids running out. It's a big house in a neighborhood that the odds are somebody's going to have a bunch of kids. Um, and so we did all hardwood looking tiles for the house because it, it just made more sense. And there's actually a really great new product on the market called Revo tile. It's brand new, um, from Dow tile and they, um, it actually clicks together. So you don't have any mortar. Um, it's a floating tile, but it's a porcelain tile and it installs in half the time and looks gorgeous. It's the same tile as their inline tile. And at the end of the day, the labor costs that you save are tremendous. It looks fantastic. It's got a little bit of a softer feel to it, but you have to know that you're look like you got to figure it out. You got to know that it's, it's that to, to notice any difference. So it goes in like a floating hardwood floor. Exactly. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Benny Beantown asks, what is the main thing you look at during a home inspection? Um, like I said before, the, the sewer is number one thing that I've been bit on. Um, foundation, always huge. Um, if the foundation's bad, I'm really not very interested. It's, there's not a lot. You just don't know what you're getting into with the foundation. We have one this season that it's just been a nightmare trying to get the yard. It's like a pond in the backyard trying to get it get the water mitigated and the basement dry it was a lot so i won't mess with that as if i can avoid it yeah um mary moakley ordway asks uh what advice do you have for someone who's getting started in the interior design space so i I am self-taught, I don't have a degree. And I, before Instagram and Pinterest and everything, I was a, I collected magazines, like stacks and stacks, and I'd pull every page and just really study the rooms that I liked. And I, it almost like vision board the, the projects that I was liking so that I could see what the trend of what I was in, liking was. Like people, I think, um, when I, when I look at people's design boards and somebody says, here's 10 rooms that I like if I'm working with a client, I can tell what direction the style of their home wants to go based on about 10 pictures. And so figuring out what your style is before you get, get working on others so that you really have a sense of figuring it out is, is important. Yeah. Um, Chris Pruel asks, is wallpaper back or is this just a fad? Oh, it's back and big, 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 big. We use, I use three papers in every project that I do at minimum. What, yes, yeah, so when you're trying to find a, I'm sure you have an awesome installer right now. I think one thing we've had trouble with is since it's kind of coming back now, a lot, there are a lot of uh, guys out there that are doing it really well. Um, you know, we've used it a few times. So what, what's the trick of finding the right, you know, person to install it? And what, you know, what's, what do you, what can you see quickly that they're not doing it correctly? Well, so very immediately, one of the things is, do they have the right equipment? There's a, um, a glue pan that my guy uses that's like, that speeds the process up considerably, but it also keeps the glue from getting on the face of the, the paper, which is huge, especially if you're doing a textured paper. So like string cloths and grass cloths, if you get the glue on the front, it's never coming off. So getting the right, having the right equipment for the project is really important and referrals, you know, see their work, see what they've done. Did they leave a mess when they walked out the door or did they clean up after themselves? Um, and were they like, the questions I would ask are like, what, if you're getting a referral from a friend or somebody that's used this person, ask them how much paper was left over? Did they accurately um, measure your space? Or did they just say, oh, you need 20 rolls when really you needed 15? Um, cause that's going to save you money. And so I know I, I have somebody that used their own installer and halfway through the project, they're like, Oh, whoops, we need five more rolls. And you've got half the room papered, you know, like that doesn't yeah. work either. So you're waiting, you got half a room papered for a month while you wait yeah. for the paper to show up. Like somebody needs to know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, uh, Javan Nan Mom asks, can a sink be changed without messing up a countertop? Um, if it's an 
overmount sink easily. Undermount sink, I would ask a professional installer first. Um, CWYCK House asks, thoughts on adding a pot filler in a small kitchen? How much value does this add? I don't think it actually adds a lot of value. It's more of an aesthetic, fun feature. I have one in my kitchen and we rarely actually use it. It, it looks cool um, and that's about it. But the reality is, is the water sits in the pipe for so long that it comes out cloudy because it's not like I'm using it three times a day and the water is filtering through. So most of the time I end up filling the pot, dumping it in the sink and then walking back over to refill it. So I could have just filled it in the sink. Nice. <laughs> I, had that, I actually hadn't thought about that, but that is a really good point. Um, Sigma Design Lab asks, what type of backsplash do you recommend? I love tile, but I also love taking the, the countertop material up the wall. It depends on how modern you want this kitchen to feel. Um, I use a ton of tile. I, I mean, I, I love tile. It is the equivalent to wallpaper for me. It just gives such a bang for the buck and go big, go home. That's one of the things that I would change in my own kitchen is my tile is the subway tile and I would change that out in a heartbeat if we were messing with it. Nice. All right, final question uh, from finally my salon. Is shiplap still in? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I still would use it exterior, um, like in a patio or a porch kind of situation or in an actual farmhouse. Yes. But in the, in town, in a regular house, no, it's that, that ship lap has sailed. <laughs> oh no. I see some comment. Um, well, thank you so much. Everyone who's been watching along, uh, make sure you watch the season premiere Tuesday night, nine, eight central on HDTV for Barney mansions. You have anything uh, else you want to finish up with? No, I just appreciate you having me on here. I love your page. Have a lot of fun watching it. So thanks for having me here. Hey. Awesome. Thank you. Have a great Absolutely. weekend. Thanks. Bye. You too. Bye.